We good? Mics are on. Uh, Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know where you are listening today, uh, but we thank you that you are joining us. This is the Data Center Hawk podcast number three, and we're really excited to get to share with you some of the things that are happening in the data center industry. Uh, We've had two other podcasts so far. Uh, Podcast number one, uh, we talked about eight things that have changed since I got into the industry. Uh, and we just really highlighted some of the major changes that have taken place. And I think uh, very interesting when you think about the way the data center industry has changed over the last, um, you know, five to 10 years. Uh, and then our second podcast was really highlighting what I think is one of the, the biggest, if not the biggest thing that has impacted the data center industry. And we covered uh, five reasons why companies are leasing data centers today. And these are trends that we've seen, not on a necessarily a market by market basis, but more at an industry level. And it's one of the things that has changed the, the space more than anything. Uh, so uh, those are the past two podcasts. Today, we're talking about um, six fourth quarter 2018 data center market trends. And so that's what we're going to be covering. Uh, and I'm really excited about getting to share with you. So this is this is from data that our company has been working on, uh, collecting, aggregating, analyzing, and then we we put out information on a quarterly basis. And so this is taken from uh, some of that data. Um, we've also been busy. If you are just joining our podcast, uh, one of the things that we've done on YouTube is interviews with data center industry leaders, and so uh, that's called Hawk Talk. So we have uh, three that we just released that are really good, like really strong content coming from those. One with uh, Andrew Schapp, who is the CEO of Aligned Energy. Uh, They have data center facilities in Dallas and Phoenix in Salt Lake City, just announced Northern Virginia. I think my takeaway from that discussion with him uh, that, uh, that I think was really valuable was his comments on future proofing. So, you know, Andrew sat with Digital Realty for 10 plus years uh, before moving to uh, take the helmet aligned. And so he's he's set with data center users. They have a really interesting uh, approach to the future proofing of their data center environment for users today. Uh, and they're doing some really neat things. The other thing that stuck out to me about that conversation was his, was his comments on water and their focus on water conservation and how to truly uh, get ahead of that before it presents itself maybe more fully as a bigger challenge for the space today. Obviously, the very large data center users are focused on this. Uh, so anyway, you can check that out. We also talked with uh, Ryan Sullivan. Ryan's the managing director with Lincoln Rackhouse, um, and they've been in the news lately because of the uh, data center portfolios they've been acquiring or assets they've been acquiring, almost in more of a sale lease back uh, opportunity. And so, uh, you know, they'll go in to find corporate data centers in markets across the U.S. Uh, figure out where, uh, you know, there are opportunities to buy those. And then the the tenant itself will actually lease back, um, you know, a a, a portion of the power and space. And so uh, his comments around that I thought were really interesting. We talked a lot about to capital in the market uh, and how that's changed over the last several years. So check that out. And then we also uh, talked with uh, Stream Data Center's Chief Operating Officer, Michael LaHood. Um, and I feel like his comment, you know, he comes from an engineering background. And so it's very interesting to get his take on the space. And, you know, he had some really interesting comments about supply management, which is actually one of the trends that we talk about. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. So anyway, great content with them. Hawk Talk, you can check that out on YouTube. It's on our um, podcast or uh, on our podcasting stuff, too, I think. So you can find it on iTunes and Spotify and um and SoundCloud. Um, So anyway, very excited today to talk through data center trends that are happening right now in the market. And, uh, and we're actually going to, we're going to theme this to the data center operator side of things. So, uh, you know, these are going to impact the data center. We're going to talk about how these trends impact the data center operator. But I think, um, you know, you will see that many of these trends are being created today by the changes of the data center user. And, you know, more than 
you know, ever, if you look in the last five years, the data center user has changed significantly. Their needs, the sizes of these transactions, how, um, you know, cloud has, has truly impacted, the adoption of cloud has impacted their IT infrastructure plan, IT strategy. Uh, we've talked about this before, but one of the biggest challenges with data center users is they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And so you're trying to create a strategy um, that, you know, you're not sure tomorrow what it will mean with the decisions that you make today. So, um, you know, uh, they are continually having to uh, engineer their plans around uh, the unknown, which obviously can be challenging. But here are six uh, trends uh, happening in the data center market today. Uh, the first one is that hyperscale data center demand cooled in 3Q 2018. So the second quarter uh, in uh, of 2018, the U.S. data center market, um, you know, hyperscale demand was at a high. And some of these deals that had been out there in the market for a long time closed. And so we saw the absorption rate. And at Data Center Hawk, we, the absorption rate is measured on, um, you know, the amount of power that is leased in the market during that quarter. We saw that jump to an all-time high. I mean, it was... Um, you know, different than we've ever seen. A lot of that was in Northern Virginia. Um, but I think while several of these companies were looking in the third quarter, um, you know, none of them or, or not many of them were able to pull the trigger to get these deals done. So, um, you know, what this means to an extent is that in certain markets, the supply can catch up, um, you know, in markets where you're seeing this really focused on Northern Virginia uh, seeing it some in Chicago, seeing it in Northern California, um, seeing it in Phoenix, seeing it little in Dallas. Uh, but as you know, when the supply isn't taken up, obviously it gives gives uh, data center operators a chance to um, you know to to be closer to their delivery. And we've talked about this before, but you know, never uh, the most important one of the most important things that these data center large data center users are looking for is speed to market. So. Um, but, uh, you know, so essentially there was a cooling of that in the third quarter of 2018. Um, you know, I do think, and we do think here at Data Center Hawk, that the fourth quarter you will see a number of these transactions take place. Um, and, and, you know, so I think the fourth quarter will be stronger uh, than, than what happened uh, third quarter. But uh, you, we definitely saw that cool. Um, there are still requirements and, and those things in the market. So be interesting to watch that uh, in those five markets specifically that um, I talked about. Uh, the second trend that we're seeing really impact the market today for data center operators is that the supply chain is the top of mind for them. Um, so one of my takeaways actually with my conversation with Michael LaHood, which I mentioned before, was you know his comment around supply chain management. And and his comment was around how much capacity can be delivered to the market today. And, you know, his comment was about it's really related to the contracts, the labor, uh, the people that are in place to help build and deliver UPS systems, generators, um, you know, prepackaged modular units that get shipped in and, and get added to these data center uh, providers in, in different markets to an extent is dependent on that. And so I think, you know, the competition for these larger requirements is pushing data center operators to focus on securing their supply chain to serve these opportunities. Um, and it's happening not just in the U.S., but it's happening internationally as well. Um, you know, the large activity is, is making access to appropriate labor and equipment, um, you know, to an extent challenging in markets where this large demand exists. And so I think that's one of the things that, um, the data center operator community is really focused on today is how to make sure they're set up not only to deliver what the user needs today, but, uh, but down the road. And there's almost a partnership between the data center provider and these companies that are serving uh, the provider today. So I think that's one of the things that you'll continue to see from a data center operator perspective's mindset is making sure that they can deliver what it is their customers need. Um, the third trend that we've recognized taking place today is that is that the large requirements are creating uh, supply challenges for data center operators in certain markets. Uh, now, if you listen to this podcast and you're a data center operator, you know your comment to that is probably like, "Well, we have no problem delivering supply." And so I want to I want to further define what I mean there. Um, you know, I think there has been a lot of maturity with uh, the data center operator community on how they bring supply to the market. 
you know, not in this podcast, but I've said it in other times. Uh, one of the things that I work with the investor, our team works with the investor community on is helping them understand what it really means when a company is saying, hey, we're going to build, you know, we, we, we bought a, a 60 acre site and we're going to build, you know, a million square feet of data center uh, capacity and, you know, whatever the, the power size is with that. Um, and there is a, definitely a um, approach to that now that is right around capital and how the capital is delivered uh, versus building all of that at once. That just does not happen. It doesn't make sense to do. And so I think there has been a lot of maturity with that and how they deploy, how data center providers deploy capital. But I think if you – uh, if you're a data center operator that is competing to win larger data center requirements and you do win those, it does create challenges for where you put the smaller enterprise requirements that are out there looking today. So as an example, if you have a, a site that has, uh, you know, a 30 megawatt build on it that gets taken by a larger user and you're not positioned to then house the rest of the uh, data center users in your pipeline, uh, that's a challenge. And so it's creating opportunities for smaller providers, sometimes privately owned companies that um, are getting a lot more competitive with the publicly traded data center REITs. And it gives them the opportunity to uh, to serve those enterprise customer needs. Um, I think one of the things that we're seeing within that too is that data center providers are buying campuses, which you definitely have seen that in you know major markets across the U.S., um, I think that will, you know, continue. And as I think about it, I mean, I'll just go around the markets real quick. But, you know, Dallas, you're seeing uh, the campus approach being happening in areas like uh, Garland, in areas like Allen, uh, in areas like uh, Alliance, um, you know, in Northern Virginia. Uh, obviously, you're seeing that in Ashburn. We're starting to see that move more to Manassas, even out to, you know, additional areas like Leesburg. Um, Chicago, you know, downtown uh, is obviously very um, full as it relates to, you know, opportunities to, to um, expand uh, from a data center standpoint. But uh, as you move out into the western suburbs there, um, you know, you're obviously seeing that in areas like Elk Grove Village. Uh, there's some technology parks being built today to, to house that campus demand. Um, as you move to Northern California, you know, this is something, and, and that's a really interesting study as it relates to Silicon Valley, Santa Clara, San Jose, um, and what the opportunities are because real estate obviously is so um, not only expensive but hard to come by there. So uh, there's a lot of creativity in trying to figure out, hey, how can we, um, you know, get our arms around a large enough campus where we can not only build today but build down the road. Um, so that's that's happening as well. And then in Phoenix, I think you're seeing that, you know, things move from the Chandler area out to Mesa and even up to, you know, the northern area of the city where, uh, you know, aligned data centers is. So, um, so anyway, you're seeing that take place so that data center operators are able to uh, not only compete for these bigger requirements, but also uh, focus on, you know, serving their enterprise uh, demand as well. Um, the fourth trend that we're seeing today uh, that's actually really interesting when you, you know, we uh, will walk through things, uh, data centers at Data Center Hawk, and, um, and really look at the design. And so the fourth thing that we've seen is that the design evolution required to attract uh, hyperscale data center opportunities is changing. Um, and this is one of the biggest changes to the market today. You know, the size of these requirements are forcing data center operators to re-engineer their design. Um, so all around efficiency, how um, inexpensive can the design be and still meet the needs of the end user? Uh, you know, and over the past several years, operators focused on enterprise size demand. Constructed facilities were designed to accommodate, you know, anywhere from 6 to 10, 12 megawatts of commission power. And so that has obviously changed today um, with the large demand in the market. You know, both the publicly traded REITs and the, and the privately owned data center operators um, are re-engineering those designs to accommodate anywhere from 20 to 40 megawatt facilities. So a couple of things that does, number one, it takes time. So, you know, there's definitely um, some companies that are out in front on this that are, I would say, in the lead as it relates to, uh, you know, building and operating these large facilities. 
there are some other companies today that uh, data center operators that are working hard to catch up. And, you know, and that comes with just iterating the design and iterating the product, but they're, but they are catching up and it's becoming more competitive. Um, and so I think, I think those two components, you know, really play into the, the design uh, changes that are going on today. Um, and if you look at just the builds that are taking place, you know, I would say three to five years ago, as it relates to every market's a little bit different, but as it relates to building sizes, you know, if you look on, uh, you know, some of the campuses that were there, you were seeing buildings that were, you know, 30 to 40 megawatts now, um, you know, as an example, you know, uh, Digital Realty's building L in Northern Virginia is 80 to 90 megawatts. Now that's through multiple phases, but that's how big that facility is you know cyrus one's Concora campus is 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 huge i mean it's you know 70 to 80 megawatts through multiple phases um you know raging wires va4 and va5 facilities are growing to uh, to be bigger uh, qts is now delivering facilities that can accommodate 30 to 40 megawatts and these are purpose-built ground up facilities so they really are repositioning their design to accommodate some of these larger requirements. Uh, Sabi data centers in Northern Virginia, another example, you know, they uh, began building in the seven to eight megawatt range. Their new building there will accommodate over 25 megawatts. Uh, You know, Vantage is increasing their original design to accommodate over 30 megawatts. If you look at the buildings that are being built um, in Dallas, you know, those are in the 30 to 40 megawatt range. Um, Chicago, we're seeing that larger growth take place, or the the larger design take place, um, Northern California for sure. So it's definitely something that is um, happening, and, you know, that's going to continue if you want to compete for those um, larger requirements. Uh, I think that, you know, the fifth thing that is taking place today is that data operators are focused on, and users are focused on, renewable energy. Um, and I think this is, I might get some interesting feedback, you know, saying this, but I think this is both from a, um, we want to do the right thing for the environment, but also a perception issue. Um, you know, I don't know what the stat is today, but a couple of years ago, there was a global stat with the data centers that they use 2% of the world's power. And so, um, that's obviously a, a big deal. And as, data center use becomes uh, more and more prevalent, uh, that that number is probably going to grow. And so I think the companies that have big footprints are realizing that, you know, they've realized that for a while, but I think they're really working hard to position themselves to be able to capture, um, you know, a renewable energy focus. And so you've seen that with very large data center users, Facebook, Apple, Google, really trying to uh, position themselves to be um, dependent on renewable energy, more dependent on renewable energy. There's a cost to that. Uh, but I think we're definitely seeing the data center operator community really focus on that as well today. So, um, you know, these types of companies are pursuing sustainability opportunities with their data center portfolio. Um, and that's something that, you know, I think a lot of companies are looking, these, these companies that have such big power requirements to be, um, you know, 100% renewable by certain years, whether that's through wind or solar contracts. Um, so look for that to continue. That is on the radar. And I think there's a, a number of opportunities there, but that's going to happen uh, moving forward. Um, and then I think the the sixth thing that is really interesting about where the market is today is the data center operators are eyeing international expansion more than ever. Um, and, and they're you know, there's a number of publicly traded and, and privately owned companies that have footprints in major international markets. Um, and so, you know, areas like London and Frankfurt and um, Singapore and, you know, I mean, there's there's definitely um, strong footprints over there. But there's still some markets, I think, that there's big opportunities and you're seeing companies that really want to make sure that they are positioned well in those markets when the demand to meet the demand that they're, that's there today, but also the demand that's, that's coming tomorrow. Um, and so, I mean, if, if you look at what, you know, again, different companies are doing, it's, it's really starting to 
shape up, not only in Europe. We had, um, you know, there's obviously Digital Realty acquired a, a, a company in, in Latin America um, this quarter that, um, you know, repositions them there. Cyrus One invested in a company there. Um, there's been investment from U.S. data center operators and, um, you know, uh, different providers in, in uh, Asia. And so I think that as uh, companies recognize that the demand will be growing in those markets, they're, they're looking to reposition themselves. And I think that's one of the things that you'll continue to see moving forward from an international expansion perspective. Um, so that is something that I would, I would keep an eye on uh, because it will, it will change from the acquisitions that take place um, as well as the growth that occurs. Uh, and I think one of, the, one of the challenges with that international expansion, um, and I think it's one reason you'll see the, uh, the growing um, acquisition activity take place, is because it is a different approach in every international market. I mean, everyone is different. And, and we don't, you know, when I, uh, it's interesting, when I was at CBRE, most of our work was done in the U.S., uh, North America, but, um, you know, those that do international data center uh, work will tell you that, you know, every market is different. The way that uh, these um, governments work with companies that have footprints in their market, you know, everyone is different. The way that uh, people view real estate in these market markets, everyone is different. How to actually get work done in these markets. And I'm, you know, I know there's people listening today that have been, that have worked in, you know, different uh, geographies throughout the, throughout the world from a data center perspective. And they all have stories about how, how challenging it can be in, in, uh, in other places. Um, so I think that's one of the things that makes international expansion so hard. And I think it's one of the things that will drive the acquisition of companies in other markets versus, you know, figuring out where to build, how much can we get there? You know, another really important component of that is the infrastructure that's in place uh, as it relates to power and connectivity and how mature that market is um, related to that. So uh, I think that's that's another really important part of the, the view of how to expand moving forward. But it's definitely on the radar. It's definitely something that will continue and, uh, and will be there for, for a while. Um, so overall, I mean, I think we feel really good about, you know, where the market is today. We'll get some questions about, you know, well, how come the the demand wasn't as much in the third quarter from a bigger perspective as it was uh, in the second quarter? And, you know, um, I think the word that the industry uses to describe that is lumpy. <laughs> and so I think, you know, that was a it was a case of that in the third quarter. Um, I'm excited to see what will happen moving forward uh, in 4Q 2018. And I think it'll round out the year. Uh, for the industry to, to be a really interesting, uh, it will be it will be a really interesting year, um, and I think the fourth quarter demand will will speak to that. Um, so that's it. Those are the things that are happening, um, you know, today at the end of the quarter, uh, or you know, in the kind of middle of the fourth quarter now. Um, and uh, and so if you have questions about this, um, you know, you can reach out to us through social media. Uh, you can reach out to us through our site. Um, but this is the information that we're tracking on a, on a you know, quarter by quarter basis. Um, and then we, we basically look market by market, and then we take the data and, uh, and listen to it here or, you know, put it on here. So um, anyway, thanks for listening. We have, uh, if you're interested in other podcasts, again, this is our third one, we have additional uh, information uh, on our site that you can access to uh, listen to those. And then if you want to uh, watch our content, you can get, do that on YouTube. Um, but we thank you for your time. Thanks for your ears or your eyes, wherever you are. And uh, we look forward to the next one. Thanks. Thanks.